now we'll start with the few more concept that are important in the general discussion of the amino acid right so the the next uh, property of the amino acid that we are going to discuss is something called as buffer capacity buffer capacity what is the meaning of buffer capacity the meaning of buffer capacity is see if i take a solution let's say this is a solution it will have a specific ph this solution will have its specific ph now what happens is if i add acid if i add acid to this solution what you are going to notice that the ph will shift towards the acidic side if we add acid the ph will shift towards the acidic side if i add on the opposite side if i add the base the ph will shift towards the basic side right so this is a normal phenomena that if you add acid the ph will go towards the acidic side if you add base the ph will go towards the the basic side but there are some special molecules which may resist this phenomena means what for example if i do the same experiment again but this time what i am doing is i am taking the same beaker it is having the solution the ph will it will have its own ph now what i am doing is i am adding a special molecule let's say this is the special molecule which is there in this solution now once this molecule is added after that if you add a certain amount of acid if you add a certain amount of acid the ph will not change it will remain the same the ph will remain the same this molecule will resist the ph change just not for the acid but also for the base if you take the base and if you add the base again the ph will not shift and the ph will remain the same will remain the same so this resistance to the ph change this resistance to the ph change is referred as buffer capacity so what is the definition of buffer capacity i can say that buffer capacity means buffer capacity i can say like that it is the resistance resistance to resistance to the ph change resistance to ph change is called as buffer capacity resistance to the ph change is called as buffer capacity now there are many molecules which works as a buffer but here we are discussing amino acid so we should know that which amino acid has this property so let's write down this point among all the amino acid among all amino acid histidine has maximum buffer capacity histidine has maximum buffer capacity histidine has the maximum buffer capacity so among all the amino acid histidine has the maximum buffer capacity this is the point to be remembered for buffer capacity the next concept is which is uh, semi uh, which is somewhat related to the ph and that is called as that is something called as zwitter ion the next concept is zwitter ion let's understand that what is the meaning of zwitter ion is so to understand the zwitter ion again i am doing the same experiment let's say this is solution it will have its own ph what i do is i take a molecule z right now there is no charge on the z right now there is no charge on z what i do is i place this z molecule inside this solution which is having a specific ph is having a specific ph i have placed this z molecule inside this solution what i what i notice is there is formation of there is formation of positive charge as well as negative charge there is formation of positive as well as negative charge and this formation of positive and negative charge is in equal amount means if there are two positive charge generated means two negative charge is also generated the the generation of charge is going to be equal if there is a molecule which have equal amount of positive and negative charge if the molecule is having equal amount of positive negative charge that is referred as zwitter ion so what is zwitter ion is zwitter ion having equal amount of equal amount of positive and negative charge if any molecule have equal amount of positive and negative charge that is going to be referred as zwitter ion 
because this vitamin is produced at a specific pH it is produced at a specific pH so this specific pH on which vitamin is formed this is referred as isoelectric pH this pH where we are going to generate the uh, vitamin this is referred as iso electric ph iso means equal equal electrical charge is generated on this ph so it's called as isoelectric ph so what is vitamin is having equal amount of positive negative charge and generated at isoelectric ph generated isoelectric ph the next point that uh, they might might ask regarding this vitamin is that sweeter ion contains what is the net charge sweeter ion net charge is zero what is the net charge the net charge is zero the net charge on zwitter ion is zero so these are the properties to be remembered for the the zwitter ion concept when it comes to how to calculate the ph how to calculate the ph we use a formula that is called as ph is equal to pka plus log of log of total amount of base divided by the log of the total amount of acid the log of total amount of base divided by the log of total amount of acid this is the formula that is used to calculate the ph and the name of this formula is this is called as henderson hasselbeck equation this is called as henderson hasselbeck equation so the name is important how it is derived that is not important what what they ask is which equation is used to calculate the ph the answer is going to be henderson hasselbeck and the equation is ph is equal to pk plus log of total amount of base divided by the load of total amount of acid this is how do we calculate the ph this is uh, all about the buffer capacity and the zwitter ion that we should know then in there is a certain variety of question that is something called as the homologous homologous substitution homologous substitution or which is also called as conservative substitution homologous substitution or conservative substitution let's understand this concept what is homologous substitution what is uh, or conservative substitution see if i ask you that what are the acidic amino acid do you know you will say we know aspartate glutamate they are acidic amino acid so what i am saying is if you are having a chain of amino acid means you are having a protein what is protein is basically a chain of amino acid you are having a chain of amino acid and one of the amino acid is aspartate if i ask you that what will be the homologous substitution of aspartate you have to find the amino acid of the similar similar category and you will replace by that that is called as homologous substitution homologous means same category aspartate is a acidic amino acid if you replace with glutamic acid that is called as homologous substitution means same category replacement so i can say conservative uh, substitution or uh, homologous substitution what is the definition is same category substitution if you do the same category substitution that is called as homologous substitution so for example we we'll just give you one example that will uh, solve the purpose we can we know that if they if we talk about the acidic amino acid let's say what will be the homologous substitution for aspartate aspartate what will be the homologous substitution aspartate is a acidic amino acid so the homologous substitution is going to be glutamate glutamate so this is how they ask in the other way i can say if they say for example cysteine what is the homologous substitution of cysteine cysteine is sulfur containing amino acid so you have to find another sulfur containing amino acid and the answer is going to be methionine so that is another sulfur containing amino acid so this is the concept of the homologous substitution or the the conservative substitution this is the the one variety of mcq they ask based on this information so this is the the general part uh, in the classification and the the basic definition part of the amino acid now we are going to start with the reaction part so the first reaction for us in biochemistry is going to be decarboxylation of amino acid decarboxylation of amino acid 
what is the meaning of decarboxylation decarboxylation as the name says decarboxylation means removal of carbon dioxide decarboxylation means removal of carbon dioxide that is called as decarboxylation so if i just give you a simple example and that will that is going to work uh, that is going to solve the purpose basically so uh, what will be the enzyme of decarboxylation the name of the enzyme is going to be very obvious it is going to be decarboxylase the name of the enzyme is going to be decarboxylase what is more important is the coenzyme the coenzyme is the coenzyme of decarboxylation of amino acid is the active form of vitamin b6 active form of vitamin b6 when it comes to the active form of b6 the vitamin b6 name is pyridoxine when it comes to the active form that is called as pyridoxine phosphate so the active form is pyridoxine or pyridoxal phosphate pyri doxal phosphate pyridoxal phosphate so it is written as plp pyridoxal phosphate plp pyridoxal phosphate plp so the name whenever we are going to do the decarboxylation amino acid what we are going to use we will use the decarboxylase the enzyme is decarboxylase and the coenzyme that we are going to use is plp plp stands for the pyridoxal phosphate that is the the active form of vitamin b6 so let's see the examples of decarboxylation of amino acid the first example is if you take glutamate amino acid and you want to remove the carbon dioxide from the glutamate when you remove the carbon dioxide from glutamate the molecule that you are going to get is gaba gaba the name of the enzyme is glutamate decarboxylase the name of the enzyme is glutamate decarboxylase what is more important is the coenzyme as i told you and that is going to be pyridoxal phosphate you are going to require plp that is the vitamin b6 active form what you can appreciate is from your physiology knowledge you may be knowing that gaba is a inhibitory neurotransmitter it is a inhibitory neurotransmitter and glutamate is a excitatory neurotransmitter so uh, inhibitory uh, excitatory is converting into inhibitory neurotransmitter just by removing the carbon dioxide right so this is one of the example of the decarboxylation reaction the second one is already been asked in the exam in the net board and that is when you take the histidine histidine if you do the decarboxylation reaction means you remove the carbon dioxide obviously you will require the same thing you will require the plp you will require the histidine decarboxylase histidine decarboxylase the molecule that we are going to get is something called as histamine histamine so the question the language of the question was when the histidine converts into histamine what is the name of the reaction the name of the reaction is decarboxylation when histidine converts into histamine what is the name of reaction decarboxylation this was the language of the question then what are the other examples the other example is if i take tyrosine and i do the same removal of carbon dioxide the molecule that we are going to get is something called as tyramine in the same way tryptophan if we remove the carbon dioxide we are going to get something called as tryptamine if you take lysine and you do the decarboxylation you will get cadaverin if we take serine and we do the decarboxylation we will get ethanolamine ethanolamine this ethanolamine further may convert into by some other reactions not decarboxylation may convert into serine sorry may convert into may convert into choline may convert into choline so what they ask is choline is made up of or made from which amino acid sometime they may ask this question that choline is made from which amino acid answer to that question will be serine 
serine first will convert into ethanolamine and the ethanolamine further can convert into choline and this was one of the question that was asked in the net board that choline what is the precursor of choline which amino acid is the precursor of choline the answer is serine so these are the few examples of the decarboxylation reaction few examples the important important are the first second and the last one first second and the last First is glutamate converts into gamma, excitatory converting into inhibitory one, histidine to histamine, and serine will convert into ethanolamine. Further, may convert into choline. So these are the examples of the decarboxylation of amino acid, and that is going to be the first reaction for us in biochemistry.